for another, well, not another, but I guess the continued set review. We ended on blue last time we had finished up the white. So let's just go down to things. I've taken lots of cold medicine, sucking on some Ricola. Hopefully, hopefully I don't lose my voice this time. Okay. Aberrant Researcher. We got a one blue, three colorless, three two flyer. Perfectly fine stats on its own. This is a snapping drake. Type deal, Cloud Manta, you've seen this in previous sets. At the beginning of your upkeep, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. If it's an instant or sorcery card, transform Aberrant Researcher. And it turns into Perfected Form, a 5-4 flyer. Love the flavor on this card. Um, I think it's actually pretty dang good. Uh, clearly the flip is completely dependent on the number of instants and sorceries in your deck. And generally you're not going to have more than a combined total of like 5, I'd say, instants and sorceries in a limited setting. But uh, as a 4-mana 3-2... As a 4-mana 3-2, it's perfectly fine on its own. Plus, uh, this helps enable Delirium, even if you're not hitting an instance or sorcery. Uh, and if you do hit that instance or sorcery, you'll flip it. My oh my. 5-4 Flyer is a bomb in Limited. I mean, it's it's just a great win con. Uh, it's going to do a ton of work. Uh, I think I'm probably going to give this maybe a 3, potentially... Oh, I should probably move those, whatever. A 3, maybe a 3.5. Um... I think this card is quite good. Happily play it. I'm probably not going to splash for it, but uh, seems like it can do a ton of work. So I'm going to go with 3.0 for Aberrant Researcher. <clears throat> uh, going down the list here. Next one I have is Startled Awake. Two blue, two colorless. Sorcery. Target opponent puts the top 13 cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. That's a big number of mil. Two blue, three colorless. Put Startled Awake from your grave... I should probably close the door. You can hear those planes. Put Startled Awake from your graveyard onto the battlefield, transformed. Activate this ability only time <clears throat> you could cast a sorcery. And if you do, it becomes a 1-1 one, one Skulk, Persistent Nightmare. When Persistent Nightmare deals combat damage to a player, return it to its owner's hand. So this is very slow, very dirty. I know a lot of people were talking about this card. Uh, when it was first previewed. Uh, let's see. So you say you cast this on turn 4. Your opponent has that's 29 cards left in their deck or so. Uh, this puts them at about 16. Uh, on the following turn, you use its ability, you get the Persistent Nightmare um, on the battlefield. You hopefully attack in with it if they have no creatures with power one or less, and then you bounce it to your hand, and you can do it again. So it is a very, very fast clock. Uh, mill is definitely a fast strategy and, or a fast clock, and this is like a one card win condition. It is slow, but it has a lot of uh, potential upside at just being able to kill the opponent. Not very splashable. It's it's too blue to cast, too blue to use the ability. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to rate this card, actually. Uh, it does end the game very quickly, though, and in a very, very hard to deal with fashion. I think I'm going to go with a 3.5 for Startled Awake uh, slash uh, Persistent Nightmare. It's just, it ends the game so quickly if unchecked. And uh, in any kind of gummed up position, if your opponent doesn't have a one power creature, it's just, it's just so hard. Did I read it wrong? You transform it from the graveyard, so you have to kill it. What? No, you cast it. It. You cast it, you mill them 13. You put it onto the battlefield as a 1-1. One, one. You attack them. If it hits, and this comes back to your hand. Yeah. I understand how it works. So I'm going to go with a 3.5 on the Startle Awake. I think the card's <clears throat> pretty good, but uh, not splashable. It's a little slow. It is susceptible to your opponent if they have, uh, heck, just removal or smaller creatures. That being said, if they do kill it once you flip it back, uh, transform it back, 
to its creature side, uh, you can just keep bringing it back for 5 mana. So 3.5, Startled Awake. Let's go next down to the uninvited guest. Whoa, if I could get it in line here. Uninvited guest, one blue, two colors for a 2-2 two, two Skulk. Skulk is this creature can't be blocked by creatures creature with, power, uh, with greater power. When uninvited guest, Geist deals combat damage to a player, transform it. So if it hits in once, it turns into a 3-3. Three, three. Unimpeded Trespasser can't be blocked. I think this card is quite nice. Well, I had a chance to play with it uh, during the <coughs> pre-pre-release. Uh, and it does a ton of work. Blue has a ton of bounce spells and other things like that. So uh, this gets in fairly easily, honestly. Um, shoot. What am I... Oh, God. I'm sort of a double-faced card. Gosh darn it. I'm a big num-num-dum-dum. Ruined. Ruined. Did it all wrong. All right, screw this. We're going back in time. Catalog. One blue, two colorless. Instant. Draw two cards, then discard a card. Uh, this was originally from Urza's Saga block. Um, and in a format with Madness and Graveyard Matters cards, I think this card is quite nice. You're not going to take it very highly, but you'll you'll play it happily in your sealed pools, and you'll happily play it in draft. You won't probably won't take it early. You'll 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 get them late. Um. But I think Catalog is quite nice. It's it's probably going to be a little bit undervalued at first, but then as people realize, well, it only or not only does it enable Madness, it also enables Delirium or it helps with Delirium. I think people will uh, start to come around to this nice blue card. In fact, many times you can just turn this into a draw two and then with Upside, right? Catalog, I'm actually going to give. I want to give it a three, but I'm going to go with a two point five here. I think that's probably closer to where it falls. Um. But don't overlook this card. I think it's going to have some, some nice uh, synergies in the format. So catalog, 2.5. All right. Next up, we have... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Confirm Suspicions. Two blue, three colorless. Instant. Counter target spell. Investigate three times. So investigate, of course. To investigate, put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with two mana. Sacrifice this artifact, draw a card. This card is wonky, man. Um, Marshall cast this a few times against me uh, over the weekend, and you know this card seems seems very very uh, decent. It's it is expensive for a counter spell, but giving you the ability to eventually draw three cards. Um, is is very very powerful. The thing is, it's so slow. If you're behind and you need to draw those cards immediately, um, a lot of the time it's it's going to be too slow. And five mana for a counter spell is is very very pricey. I still think this card is fine though, but I'm only going to go with a two point five. <clears throat> or sorry, a two, a two for con confirmed suspicions. Every every time I saw the um, the investigate cards in action, they just entirely unimpressed me. Um, I think they look better than they are. I could be completely wrong, but from what I've seen of this format, both draft and sealed, it is faster uh, than than allowable for for investigate cards like this. I'm still going to run into my blue decks. It's just I think it's it's very very slow. So I'm going to go with a 2.0 for confirmed suspicions. Moving on, we have the Drown Yard Explorers. This is a one blue three colors two four. When Drownyard Explorers enters the battlefield, investigate. So this is an investigate card that I can get behind. I can already tell I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> this is an investigate card I can get behind. Four mana for a 2-4 in limited uh, is basically the standard. And this one sort of cantrips when it uh, when it enters, right? You do have to pay two for it, but uh, you're going to get some value, and a 2-4 does block a lot of things. I think this per card is perfectly fine as well. Uh, I'm going to rate it on the same power level as the previous rare. I'm going to give this a 2.0. You're not going to splash for this. You're not going to take it very highly, but in your blue decks, you're probably going to happily run this. It'll block a lot of creatures, and it has some uh, value uh, late game. So 2.0 for Drown Yard Explorers. On to the next one. Boop, boop. Engulf the Shore. One blue, three colors. Instant. Return to their owner's hand. All creatures with toughness 
less than or equal to the number of islands you control. Return to their owner's hands all creatures with toughness less than or equal to the number of islands you control. So if you're in a heavy blue deck, or even just, you know, blue is one of your two colors that you're playing, this card is insanely powerful. Generally, these type of effects are uh, relegated to sorceries. So the fact that it's an instant and you're able to do it at the opponent's end of turn and then be the first player to uh, to get uh, position on the board is, is very, very nice. There are going to be times where you, you're unable to bounce your opponent's bomb because you know it's like a 5-5 a five five or something. But overall, I think this card is going to lead to some uh, very, very good value. Also, you get to return to your hand uh, creatures that you control that have enters the battlefield abilities. Sure, same for the opponent, but you can uh, craft a strategy around this. I'm always going to play this in my blue decks. Obviously, you can't splash for this unless uh, you have some way to turn all of your lands into islands. But um, I expect to take this highly and, and see how it goes early in the format. And then um, after playing it a few times, you know, maybe the rating uh, dies down. But I'm going to give this a 3.5. I think this card is very, very powerful. Engulf the Shore, instant 3.5 for me. All right, next down the line, we have a card that I really, really like. The Erdwall Illuminator, 1-3 Flyer for 2. It is a spirit, so there are some synergies with spirits. Whenever you investigate for the first time each turn, investigate an additional time. Pretty straightforward. Uh, pretty easy. A 1-3 Flyer for 2 is already fine. If you guys remember McKinney Aeronaut uh, in the previous set, obviously the McKinney Aeronaut was um, an ally, so it had a lot of synergy. But um, a 1-3 Flyer blocks a lot of the early game. Uh, gets in some points when you need it to and kind of proliferating your first investigate is really sweet uh, like I said before I'm not a huge fan of the investigate cards uh, a lot of the time they're just too slow and dirtily but uh, this definitely has value this definitely has value I think I'm gonna give this a 2.5 you know I'm always gonna play this in my blue decks just because it's an early flyer uh, that has a decent booty to block and when you're in blue, you're almost certainly going to be running some number of uh, investigate cards, so you're more than likely to get a little bit of value. But uh, you know, it, it's it's just very fine. It's very medium. That's all. Two point five Erdwall Illuminator. Okay, going down, we have Fleeting Memories, <laughs> a card that kind of goes in line with um, the Erdwall Illuminator. One blue, two colorless enchantment. When Fleeting Memories enters the battlefield, investigate. <clears throat> Uh, whenever you sacrifice a clue, target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. This is my type of card. Um, I think there is going to be a mill deck in this format. I don't think it's going to be very good because a lot of the core cards are uncommons. But, you know, the, the one out of 500 times that you are able to pick up multiples of this card and then um, another card that we'll get to later... Uh, I think you have the potential to do some some real work. Um, standalone, this card is pretty bad. I'm gonna, I think standalone, this card is like a 1.5, maybe a 1. Uh, but in the right deck, in the right deck, I'm going to give it a 2.5. And I, I think if you take this early, force it, and get lucky, a lot of things need to happen, obviously. Uh, I think it can be good in the correct deck. But just for overall... I would say don't don't run this card. It, it's very low. Yes, it can enable a delirium for yourself uh, should you choose to do so. But again, it's just it's not the type of card that you want to play. Um, maybe if the sealed format is a ton slower, I could see bringing this in or main decking it to try to mill the opponent. But again, I think this card is not something that you should play have, uh, highly. Fleeting memories. I'm gonna give it a 1.0. Sorry. Next card, we have Furtive Homunculus. Furtive Homunculus. One blue, one colorless. Two one. Skulk. That's all there is to it. This card is clearly filler. Um, it's fine if you need curve purposes. Sometimes, uh, you know, if your opponent's playing maybe like the Werewolf deck or something, this can just keep sneaking in. Uh, but generally, this is just going to be filler. 
you're not extremely happy about this, I'm just gonna give this a 1.5, and uh, we'll keep going down from there. So Fertile Homunculus, nice little 1.5. Next up we have Ghostly Wings. This is a reprint. Uh, we've seen this card many, many times before. This is one blue, one colorless enchantment aura, enchant creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has flying. Not bad, not awful, not great. Discard a card, return enchanted creature to its owner's hand. So a lot of people forget that you can put this on an opponent's creature uh, to kind of bounce it, right? Obviously you don't want to pump up their creature, but in a pinch you can remove one of their blockers should you need to. Uh, this is also a really good way to enable uh, some madness cards, and in a pinch, delirium. Um, delirium, because remember, you put this on a creature, you discard a card to return that creature to those owner's hand, Ghostly Wings is going to go to the graveyard, so not only are you going to get enchantment, but you're also going to get whatever else you've discarded uh, for Delirium's sake. So just uh, a small thing to notice. I think this is card. Or I think this card is going to be a little bit higher than you think it is, but it's still not very good. Uh, I'm going to give it a 2.0. Uh, maybe like a, actually a 1.5. It's probably on par with Furtive Homunculus. It's not great. It has some rolls. Uh, but you're never super happy about it, especially in draft, you're not going to take this highly. Ghostly Wings, I'm going to give it a 1.5. <laughs> okay, next on the list, Invasive Surgery, 1 blue. Instant, target, counter, sorcery spell. Delirium, if there are 4 more card types in the blah blah blah, so Delirium. Um, Search the graveyard hand and library of that spell's controller for any number of cards with the same name as that spell. Exile those cards and that player shuffles his or her library. Uh, in limited, which uh, is what I'm giving the ratings based on, this card is not a very high pick, not a very high playable. Um, what? Why are we repeating? Uh, I might sideboard this card in. I might sideboard this card in if I see the opponent have a ton of high power sorceries. But otherwise, I think this card is bad. Uh, you're not going to run it very frequently. I'm like bottom of the line, 1.0 uh, fringe sideboard card. Invasive surgeries. Next up, Jace's Scrutiny. One blue, one colorless, instant. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero oh, until end of turn. Investigate. This probably is going to find a home in that mill deck. This is like the lowest possible type of combat trick in non-mill deck. Uh, you're not happy about this card. Again, pretty low. 1.0. Jace's Scrutiny. Not too impressive. Batter up. We have the Lamplighter of Selhoff. 1 blue 4 colors, 3 5. Zombie Horror. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another zombie, you may draw a card. If you do, discard a card. 5 mana for a 3-5 is actually pretty decent stat-wise. 3-5s um, generally block most things on the ground. If you remember creatures such as uh, Ulamak, uh, Translator of Kozilek from the last set, or before that, Oracle of Dust, those always overperform because um, they have decent power and they just block everything. I think the Lamplighter is going to be pretty decent uh, as one of the top end cards, uh, cards of the of the zombie type deck, uh, there are, are a bunch of other cards that rely on zombies or have synergies with zombies. And I think this one is perfectly fine. Um, five mana, you're not often going to be able to cast the madness in addition to casting this card if you have a you know madness card because this one costs five. But it enables in delirium, and there are some cards that uh, benefit from going to the graveyard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think this card is perfectly playable. Not super exciting. I'm going to give it a 2.0, maybe a 2.5 in that region. It's between 2.0 and 2.5. Um, but again, not very exciting. Does what it does. Next up, Nagging Thoughts. One blue, one colorless. Look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Madness for one blue, one colorless. So, um, this is a role player card. You're not going to play it in every single blue deck, but it helps turn on um, a Delirium. Uh, you get to kind of sift through the top few cards of your library, which is not irrelevant. 
Uh, and it also has madness, so you can discard it to a lot of the other blue effects to still get the ability uh, and enable that delirium should you have it. Plus, in the zombie deck, there are cards, again, that matter if they are in your graveyard or put into your graveyard. So it's not awful. Uh, it's not great. Not taking it very highly, not playing it very highly, but in the right decks, it can do some work. This is like a 1.5 at best. Um, yeah, nagging thoughts. Not too exciting. Here's a fun one. Niblis of Dusk. One blue, two colors, two one flyer with prowess. Uh, I don't remember, what was it called? Just Guy Wind Scout, I think? From Khan's block. This is exactly that card, except it's a spirit. And again, there are a few cards that, uh, that uh, benefit spirits, but... You know, standalone it's fine. Three mana for a 2-1 flyer is basically average stats. Generally, you get 2-2 two, two flyers for three mana these days. Um, these so-called Windrakes of the format. But having prowess is a big deal. Um, you know, you're able to sometimes uh, blow people out in combat or get in for extra points of damage if you're, you know, you're casting a sorcery pre-combat or something like that. So it has a little utility. You're always going to run this in your blue decks. You're not going to splash for it. And I don't think it's a huge signal, nor should you take it very highly. But it's perfectly acceptable. We're going to give it a 2.5 for Niblis of Dusk. Okay, next up we have Pieces of the Puzzle. One blue, two colorless. Reveal the top five cards of your library. Uh, put up to two instant and or sorcery cards from among them in your hand, and the rest into your graveyard. This is a sorcery. This entirely depends on how many instants and sorceries are in your deck. Um, looking at the top five, you don't have much room to whiff. Uh, I think more frequently than not, you're going to only find one target off of this. But it is pretty good at enabling uh, Delirium. I assume every time you cast this card, you're probably going to get like a land or a creature, or if not both, uh, into the bin. So if you're looking to enable Delirium, or if you're looking for some very specific high power sorceries and instants, um, like the Startle Awake, for instance, then I think this, this is probably fine. It's not amazing. Um, I'm looking at like a 2.0 at the top, maybe like a 1.5. Blue so far is is just has a lot of low power mediocre cards. Uh, we'll get some more in, we'll get some better ones eventually, but piece of the puzzle, I think it's like a 1.5, maybe a 2 at tops. Okay. <clears throat> Next card is one blue, one colorless, press for answers. It's a sorcery, tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step, investigate. Now generally these type of effects, you'll notice, uh, are instant. This one's a sorcery, so you have to cast it on your turn, um, which means you know you can't do it on, their, on your opponent's turn before they attack to kind of tap it down for two turns. Uh, this is only keeping something down tapped for a turn and giving you a slow card draw enabler. Again, maybe in some weird mill deck you'll want this card just to buy some time. It's not very good. It's an easy way to get a sorcery into the graveyard for Delirium, but this is like a 1.0 in my opinion. Um, prove me wrong. Press for answers. I'm going to give it a 1.0. Next card. Ooh, a lot better. Probably probably one of the best blue cards we've seen so far. This is Reckless Scholar. This is a reprint, of course, from uh, World Awake Days. This is one blue, two colors for a 2-1. Tap it. Target player draws a card and then discards a card. Now, looters... <laughs> Sorry, more Ricola. Ricola. Uh, looters in Limited are always good. I think people generally undervalue them, especially newer players. Um, and this has the added benefit of being in a format where not only does do discard matter, but um, what's in your graveyard also matters. And so I think Reckless Scholar gets a nice boost in this format as opposed to uh, other formats it might have been in. Um, it is pretty frail. It is a 2-1, so it dies to mostly anything. And 3 mana is a little bit um, expensive. You like your looters to have uh, to be 2 mana, generally, because like Merfolk looter, etc., etc. But I think this card is is very powerful. It has a lot of upside. I think this is probably a 3.5. Um, it's obviously not a bomb, but you're going to play it in every single blue deck you have. And if you have Madness, uh, if you have Delirium, if you have Graveyard Matters, this card is going to, going to go way up. Uh, happy to play this. 
probably happy to pick this early. I'm going to give 3.5 for the Reckless Scholar. Oh man, the next bomb in blue, Seagraph Scab. One blue, one colorless, one three. And then a bunch of flavor text. Your recent work is an inspiration. I have the utmost respect for your approach and your craft is impeccable. At your convenience, I would be honored to collaborate on a project. Ludovic, Le Ludovic, let her take Giralf, Giralf, whoever. Uh, what is this, Lumen Grid Warden? The one thing that this card has going for it, it's a zombie, so uh, it does gain some synergies from other Zombie Matters cards, but I assume this is going to be filler. You probably want this in your mill decks, just because it comes down early and can block like the, the random bears of the format. Um, it's not entirely unplayable, but it's not great. It's basically 1.5 tops. Uh, yeah, so Seagraph Scab, 1.5. Next card, we have the Silent Skimmer. One blue, three colors, Spirit. One five, Flying. Damn, that Spirit's got a booty. Uh, you guys know I like me a Dancing Scimitar. Well, one five, Flyer for four. Pretty dang big. Uh, this is also a Tormented Angel in blue, if you remember that card. I think the Silent uh, Observer, did I say Skimmer? So I think the Silent Observer is actually not bad. It blocks almost everything in the format. Uh, furthermore, it's evasive. So it, uh, you know, in, in times when you can start poking over. I think a lot of people are going to miss the fact that it, it blocks Skulk exceptionally well. Right? It's just, basically think of this as a wall that maybe pings them for one or two uh, later on in the game. but. If your opponent has a bunch of Skulk cards, this is going to be one of the best uh, blockers against opposing Skulk cards. It's not a bomb. It's I'm probably not going to be splashing this, uh, but I think it is very, very playable. I'm going to give it a 2.5. I'm going to give it a 2.5. I think it's I think it's perfectly fine. Maybe this rating is a little bit high, but uh, I think I think it's going to be underrated. Silent Observer. I'm going to give it a 2.5 here. All right, next card, we got the, uh, the Stitchy Mangla, the Stitched Mangla, one blue, two colors for a 2-3. Zombie Horror, Stitched Mangler enters the battlefield tapped. When Stitched Mangler enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't tap target because control attacks on Tom's taps. So. I fumbled there at the end. Um, yeah, it's like a Step Links, a 2-3 Step Links. That's a zombie that enters the battlefield tapped. You're always going to play this in your blue decks. I'm probably not going to splash for it, but, uh, you know, there are bounce effects in the format. There are Zombies Matters cards in the format. I think this card is perfectly fine. It's not amazing, but it's perfectly fine. It's probably a little bit better than Stitched Observer, but I don't want to give it a 3, so I'm going to give it a 2.5. Or a... Th eh, maybe, eh, you know what? I'll settle on a 3. I'll settle on a 3 for Stitch Mangler. Because you're always going to play this in your blue decks, right? And two mana, or th rather, three mana for a two three is perfectly acceptable. So, yeah, two point or three point oh, Stitch Mangler, not bad, man, not bad. Did I say Step Links? Oh, you meant I meant Frost Links. Guys, it's the it's the cold medicine, man. It's, I've been I've been drinking too much of the syrup. You know what I'm saying? All right, next up we have Storm Rider Spirit, one blue, four colors, three three, Flash Flyer. 5 mana 3 3 flyer is the norm and limited. This one has flash, so it's going to ambush some stuff. Uh, I'm always going to play this in my blue decks. I'm. It's kind of like removal, so I, I could see you splashing for it in, in a pinch. Uh, it's not amazing, though. Uh, hmm. I don't. I think. This is probably on par with the Stitched Mangler. I'm gonna give it a 3.0. I'm not gonna get it. Give it a 2.5. I think 3.0 is a little bit high, but this is definitely um, pretty solid. It can win the game for you. It can eat a creature. Yada yada yada. This is like a 3.0 Storm Rider Spirit. Vessel of Paramnesia. Uh, somebody pointed out. I don't remember where that this is the the face from uh, Memory Lapse. The face from memory lapse. 
Uh, one blue, one colorless enchantment. Blue, Sacrifice Vessel of Paramnesia. Target player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Draw a card. We were talking about that mill deck a little while ago, and I think this is probably another one of the key components in that deck. Uh, it's an enchantment to put in your graveyard for Delirium. It's three cards in the opponent's graveyard. Uh, and you draw a card, so it cantrips. And you know what? Even if you're not playing the mill deck, this is just a great enabler for... Uh, Delirium because you can it's it's target player puts the top three so I think this is gonna be a role player in in the fringe decks I don't think it's a card you take very highly it's not a card you're obviously excited about but eh, it's playable and again it's uh, it's it's it does things I'm gonna give it a 2.0 <clears throat> let me give it 2.0 vessel of paramnesia 2.0 all right we've done all of the right column cards Let's go to the left column cards of blue now. Boop, boop. First up, Broken Concentration. Two blue, one colorless, instant counter target spell. Counter target spell. Madness. One blue, three colorless. And of course, Madness, if you don't know, if you discard this card, discard it into exile. That's a new change, actually, from the old Madness. When you do, cast it for its Madness cost or put it into your graveyard. Um. Cancel, it has never been amazing. It's always fine. I like this card a lot more in Sealed than in Draft, where uh, it's more bomb-centric. You know, sometimes you're going to get madness value with this card, right? Sometimes you're going to have, like, say it's late in the game and... No, I guess Catalog's not a good example. Say it's late in the game and you have uh, Reckless Scholar, right? You have Reckless Scholar, uh, and you have Broken Concentration in your hand. And your opponent goes to tap out, they're like, Flame Bit Played Angel! And you're like, One second, sir. Tap my Reckless Scala, draw a card, discard Broken Concentration, Madness it, get you. Dude, you freaking got him. Did, not, did you not just hear me? You got him. Got you. Eh, this card is fine, it's not amazing. Uh, the double blue is means it's gonna be only for blue decks. And the Madness is not going to come up very frequently because it's 4 to Madness out. I'm going to give this a 2.0. Um, yeah, it's just it's just fine. Not amazing. So 2.0, Broken Concentration. Next card, Compelling <clears throat> Deterrence. One blue, one colorless, instant return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then that player discards a card if you control a zombie. This card is just great on its own. Um, because... There are a lot of uh, transform cards, uh, most notably the werewolves and whatnot. Like you can you can buy a lot of tempo with this card. Plus, if you're playing a, a zombie deck, um, yeah, you kind of get like a nice little two for one. Uh, the awkward thing is making the opponent discard could be slightly awkward. Could be slightly awkward, right? Because there are madness cards in the format, so you might you might. Uh, help your opponent out, uh, opponent out a little bit. If you've seen madness cards from your opponent or a graveyard uh, matters from your opponent, you might have to try to sculpt a position where where the discard is, is going to be beneficial. But generally, generally it's all upside. I think this is actually quite good for the blue decks. Uh, this is probably a 3 point... Eh, 3.5 is a little bit too high. I'm going to give it a 3.0. Um... It's, it's not great, but it is Disperse, uh, and in this format, I think Disperse is a little bit better than in other formats, so I'll give it a 3, uh, but I could definitely see it being a little bit higher. You can't Madness opponent's cards. What do you mean? If I make, if I make you discard a card and you have Madness in your hand, and you discard that Madness card. Yeah, of course you can. What? Then that player discards a card. Oh, so I guess you can turn on your own Madness. But yes, if, like, if you target your opponent's creature and they have a Madness card, they can discard it and play their Madness. What do you... Yeah. Don't lie to me. Next up, uh, Deny Existence. One blue, two colorless, instant. 
Counter target creature spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. I think this card is actually pretty decent. Um, it's not it's not impressive, but I'm always going to run the first at least the first one in my blue decks. Uh, and you know, it it exiles the card, so this can have some some benefit if you're trying to get delirium online or uh, if you if you're able to counter like one of your opponent's uh, zombies that can come back from the graveyard, this this definitely has some sweet uh, interactions. It's not a high playable, but it, it's decent. I'm gonna give this a 2.0, not a 2.5, but I think you're always happy to run the first. All right. Next on the list, we have Drew Now, Corpse Trawler, one blue, three colorless, one one. When it enters the battlefield, put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield. And you can play a black and two colors to give target zombie death touch until end of turn. <clears throat> uh, so you get three power, three toughness, sp split over two creatures for four mana. And you can give a zombie um, death touch until end of turn. So this is kind of like a weird zombie lord. Kinda. Uh, the nice thing is... What was I going to say about the nice thing about this card? I don't remember what the nice thing I was going to say about this card is. But, this does have a lot of good synergies. We were talking about zombie cards a lot previously. Um, if you're able to flicker or bounce it yourself, you can get some sweet value. And uh, it just turns all of your zombies, including itself. It does not say another target zombie. You can give itself Death Touch too. Um, it's kind of like a, a splicer from from Shadows, uh, or not Shadows, uh, Scars of Mirrodin block. So, I think this card is pretty decent. It's a 2.5 or 3-ish. Uh, it's not a bomb, but you'll happily play this in your blue decks. It obviously gets a ton better if you're playing black as well. Uh, but otherwise, it's just, you know, decently solid. Next up, we have Epiphany of the Drown At the Drown Yard, rather. One blue X instant rare. Review the top X plus one cards of your library and separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one of those piles, put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Uh, I think this card is actually really fine in limited. I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, if you pay three mana, you get four cards. So if X is three, you get four cards, right? If you pay five, so on and so on. You, like The number of cards you reveal is gonna always e be equal to X. That's not true. Wait. The, always, the, the, the number of cards you reveal is always going to be equal to the total casting cost of Epiphany. Right? So if you pay one, um, then you look at one card. If you pay two, or X is one, then you look at two cards. Yeah, there. I got it. I found the line. Um, now, obviously, given the opponent the option of what goes into your hand and what goes into your graveyard is not as good, but this is just straight up card advantage, right? Uh, assuming you cast it for like three X is three, so you pay four mana instant speed. You get two piles of two, or like one bomb and three uh, and three uh, other cards. Right? I think this card is actually pretty good. It's kind of splashable, honestly. Um, I'm gonna give this a kind of a high rating of 3.0. I'm going to give this a kind of a high rating of 3.0. I think this card is perfectly playable. In a pinch, it enables uh, or helps enable Delirium. Uh, we've already seen some zombie matters or graveyard matters cards before. So don't overlook this card, but don't overrate it as well. It's, I think it's just very, very average. 3.0, happy, happy to play it. Okay, next is the Energy Flux. One blue... Instant. Exile target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it's a spirit, put a 1-1 counter on it. Okay, so this is one of the few ways to, like, flicker uh, cards in the format. Um, this has a lot of versatility. I'm always going to play the first, I think, in my in my decks. Um, especially, if you, especially if you have enters the battlefield tricks, just like that zombie that we saw earlier. You can flicker that, get another 2-2, save it, yada yada yada. Um, you can also just permanently deal with tokens on your opponent's side. Should that be a thing, you can get rid of 
uh, enchantments. And there must be some spirits that I'm not thinking about that it synergizes with. Oh, like the 2-4 flyer. The 2-4 flyer for 5 that if a creature died, you get another 1-1 flyer onto the battlefield. This works with that. I think this card is actually pretty solid um, as far as tricks go. I'm going to give it a 2.5. Not really a splashable card, but a card that I'm always going to play in the blue deck arenas. Okay, Forgotten Creation. One blue, three colors for a 3-3 Skulk. Zombie Horror. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. Wow! 3-3 three, three Skulk for 4. That's not bad. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. I think this card is actually great. In fact, maybe splashable, honestly. Like, late game, this is just absurd. You, you, you know, you hold on to a few lands, and then discard them, fill up your hand with new new cards. Maybe it's maybe they're more lands, but you can just keep doing that. Uh, helps enable Delirium, Graveyard Matters. This might be like a 3 or a 3.5, honestly. Uh, you have to remember, you're discarding the cards. So if you have Madness, you're also uh, being able to Madness those on your upkeep because you've untapped, right? It's the beginning of your upkeep. So you've untapped, you have all this fresh mana, you discard some Madness cards, you fill up your hand, bam, value. I'm going to give this a 3.5. I think, I think this card is quite good. Um... We'll see how the format plays out. I mean, obviously, I haven't had a chance to play with this card yet, but um, I think I think it has some very, very high upside. I'm going to give it a 3.5. Yeah, it could definitely be a 4. It could definitely be a 4, but I'm going to give it a 3.5. Here's a fun one. This is um, Giralf's Masterpiece. Two blue, three colors. 7-7 seven, seven flying. Gets minus one, minus one for each card in your hand. One blue, three, discard three cards, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Um, so this is one of the very first cards that we've seen that can come back from the graveyard by itself. It is huge. I mean, you're, you're generally going to be able to just cast this out on turn five. It's not going to be large, but uh, it just continues to grow and grow. Um... And the ability to get it back from your graveyard is also quite nice. Um, I don't know how to rate this yet, though. I think it is quite good. Uh, it's not splashable. That's not true. You could splash its discard ability. I don't know. I think. I think this is kind of on par with the Forgotten Creation power level. Uh, the nice thing is that it can just keep coming back and back and back, and it is a huge clock and huge body. Um, and should you be returning it from your graveyard, it's going to generally be the full value 7-7, seven, seven, I would assume. Uh, I don't want to give this a 4, but it's probably pretty close to a 4. I'm going to give it a 3.5, though. I'm going to say 3.5... I'll probably be proven wrong. I'll, it'll probably just be the Stone Nuts and Limited, but until that time, I think I'll get just a very, very solid, good rating. 3.5 for Draw's Masterpiece. Next card is Gone Missing. Some people played this card at the pre-pre-release, and I'm just not impressed by it. One blue, three color. Sorry, one blue, four color. Sorcery. Sorcery. Put target permanent on top of its owner's library. Investigate. It doesn't even cantrip, man. It's seven mana before you draw a card again. Is put target permanent on top of its owner's library for five mana worth it? Oh. I don't think so. Um, you can combo this with some, some mill to like use it as a removal spell, but standalone, this is just so sad. Yes, it's good with, uh, or against, like, werewolves and stuff, but I don't think I'm going to be ever too happy to play this card. Um, I would almost never want to run multiples. I think it's fine, but not great. I'm probably going to give it, like, a 1.5 and just be perfectly content with leaving it at that. Gone Missing, 1.5. Meh. 
Jace, Unraveler of Secrets, two blue, three colorless, Planeswalker. Starts with five loyalty counters. Plus one, scry one, then draw a card. Feels good, man. Minus two, return target creature to its owner's hand. Feels good, man. Minus eight, you get an emblem with whenever an opponent casts his or her first spell each turn, counter that spell. Feels better, man. Uh, Planeswalkers are always broken and limited, generally speaking. Uh, sure, you have the rare outlier to vault, but this one is great. It protects itself uh, immediately by bouncing a creature should you choose to do so. If board is at parity or uh, you need to dig for something, well, scry one, draw a card. And should you ever ultimate, this is very, very hard for the opponent to win the game. Uh, this is definitely, definitely a bomb. Uh, not sp not very splashable, but a card that you will look to build around for sure. This this is going to be a 4.5 for me. I just... It's a Planeswalker, what do you expect? Jace, Unraveler of Secrets, I'm going to give it a 4.5. Just the Wind. Well, let me give you just a tip. One blue, one colorless, instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand. Madness for a blue! This is one of my favorite cards from the set. Uh, it's not broken or anything, but it's just value, value, value. Uh, you can easily madness this card to get extreme value. You're returning a creature to its owner's hand. I expect this card to just be one of the best blue commons in the format. I'm going to give it a very, very solid 3.0. Uh, because just bouncing a creature is not impressive, but man... The added benefit of being able to madness this away is so nice. And so, in fact, it might be even like a 3.5, but I think 3 is just perfectly acceptable for, for just the wind. Alright, next one. This is the uh, mill creature I was talking about. This is, again, an uncommon, so the mill deck is uh, very hard to build. This is Manic Scribe, 1 blue, 1 colorless, 0 3. Human Wizard, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So yes, yes, you are helping the opponent reach Delirium, and you are helping them with any Graveyard Matters cards. But if you are the mill deck, this is one of the very key cards that you are looking for, because should you have Delirium, at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, um, that player puts the top three cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Again, if you have Delirium. So this is a very, very quick mill clock should uh, Delirium be turned on for you. And again, this combos with the card that we were talking about previously, uh, Gone Missing. Again, Gone Missing, not very good by itself, but Manic, Manic Scribe doing a lot of work in the mill deck. Otherwise, I don't like this card, uh, but it does have some some scenarios where it's going to be nice. I'm going to give this a 1.5 overall, but if you're in mill, oh yeah, this is like a 3.5, man. This is this is like the card that you are looking for. Uh, so, if you're in draft, and I'm sure I'm going to do this, and you pick up Startle the Wake or something, pick one, pack one, all in on that Manic Scribe plan. Uh, otherwise, it's terrible, and don't play it. It has it has a it has a varying varying uh, varying rating depending on the on the mood. Next up, Nephalia Moondrakes. Two blue, five colorless. Five five flying drake. When it enters the battlefield, target creature gains flying until end of turn. That's pretty nice. Two blue, four colorless, exile it from your graveyard. Creatures you control gain flying until end of turn. Wow! <coughs> okay, not doing that again. <coughs> Too high. <clears throat> no num 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 subclubs today. <clears throat> uh, five five flying beater for seven. Pretty good and limited. Uh, you get to attack with another creature almost as immediately, or assumingly, because you're going to give it flying. And then should this die, or maybe you even self mill it. Um, in a pinch, you know you can go up all your creatures flying uh, until end of turn. This is definitely a bomb. Um, it's not very splashable. It might even be too slow for, for draft sakes, but um, definitely rate this card very, very highly. I'm going to give this a 4.0. This card does some work. It is, it is extremely, <clears throat> extremely pricey, but 
it ends the game very, very quickly. Ends the game very, very quickly. Next up, ongoing investigation. One blue, one colorless enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, investigate. One green, one colorless exile creature card from your graveyard. Investigate, you gain two life. Hmm. I don't know how to rate this card. Whenever one or more creatures you control deals combat damage to a player. So that, that ability is mainly irrelevant, I feel like. Exile a creature card from your graveyard. Investigate. You gain two. I think that is very good. I think being able to gain life from creatures in your graveyard is very, is very, very solid. But that makes you... <clears throat> that means you're in blue-green. I have no idea how good blue-green is in this format. Um... I think I'm always happy to run this though if I'm blue green. I don't think I would splash for this card. Uh, this is like a 1.5 normally, but if if you're blue green, I think this card has some nice some nice potential. I think in blue green it's like a 2.5. Honestly, just turning all of your dead creatures into not only life but Eventually, another card is is pretty strong. I don't mind giving this a two point five if you're in uh, if you're in those colors. Pour over the pages. Two blue, three colors. Sorcery. Draw three cards. Untap up to two lands. Then discard a card. Pretty solid, kids. Pretty solid. Um, it is expensive. It is slow, but it does a lot of things. Madness, Graveyard Matters, Delirium, yada yada yada. And you're drawing three cards. You're looking at f three fresh new cards, and you might even be able to cast a spell to follow it up. I think uh, Pour Over the Pages is probably like a 3.0. Just very solid. Very solid. Always played in your blue decks. <clears throat> uh, can't really splash it. Next up, we're going to rattle some chains here. One blue, one colorless, two one flyer. Flash. Great stats by itself. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target spirit gains hexproof until end of turn. So it can give itself hexproof, can give other spirits hexproof, and then there's more, there are more words on it. You may cast spirit spells as though they had flash. So if you have the spirit deck, this card is 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 great. Uh, and even just standalone in a blue deck, it's a two one flyer flash, right? Uh, I think this card is just very very solid. Nothing exciting. This is like a three point oh. Um, that's basically it. Like, it's not a bomb. I'll probably first pick this if there's not a good removal spell in the pack or something. Uh, and I'll happily play it in my blue seals, but... Eh, just, just can do a lot of work. 3.0 I'm happy to give for the, for the rattle chains. I don't think it's a 3.5. <clears throat> Rise from the Tides. One blue, five colors, sorcery. Put a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token on the battlefield tapped for each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard. This doesn't count itself, correct? I think... I believe this doesn't count itself uh, when you cast it, so... Depending on what your deck is like, and remember, there are a lot of ways to self-mill in this format. I think this card could be pretty decent. Uh, the thing is, it puts the zombies onto the battlefield tapped, <clears throat> and it's a sorcery, so... If you're behind at all, this is not going to help you on that turn. But uh, I, I could see this easily putting three plus zombies in uh, in the right deck. And then if, if if the game has gone long, man, you could you could easily get five zombies. I think this card is kind of a role player. In fact, this could even be splashable. I could definitely this, see this card being splashable uh, in the correct deck. You know what, I'm going to give this a 3.0. I think this card is going to surprise some people. I think this card can do some real work. I'm going to give it a 3.0. I want to see how it does in the format when it comes out, obviously, but... <coughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for this. The thing is, instant and sorcery. So it's, it's a lot more constrictive than uh, just having creatures in the graveyard, but... I, I want to see how that, that turns out. 
And now we have the best blue card in the format, in the set. One blue, five colors, six, six, turtle. Silberland Snapper. Can't attack unless you cast a non-creature spell this turn. Alright. It's a big blocker. Sometimes it attacks. Sometimes you're going to want this card. Uh, but overall, I'm generally not going to be too happy with this. It blocks everything on the ground, pretty much. And when it does get to attack, it is huge. But, uh... Yeah, I'm just going to leave it at a 1.5. And go on to the next card. Sleep Paralysis. One blue, three colorless. Enchantment Creature Aura. When it enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature. Enchanted Creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step. So this one's nice because it taps the creature for you uh, when you cast it. So you can, you can cast it on a creature with Vigilance. You can cast it on a creature that just entered the battlefield. Oh. And it basically permanently removes it. Sometimes you're gonna get, you're gonna have to use this on a creature that has uh, extra abilities that don't require it to tap. But even then, this is pretty strong for a blue removal spell. And honestly, it's probably splashable if you don't have enough removal. This is probably like a two point five or a three. Uh, I'm not gonna rate it too high, but again, it does its job and it does it fine. Uh, I'm gonna go with a three here. I'm gonna be happy to play it in my blue decks. 3.0 for Sleep Paralysis. Stitchwing Scob. One blue, three colorless, three one flyer. One blue and a colorless, discard two cards, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield. Tapped. Uh, this is a card I like, but it's, it's very frail. Uh, this is a good beater, an okay blocker because it has three power, so it's going to do a lot of trading a lot of the time, but um, nothing nothing great. Uh, being able to buy it back from your graveyard is cool. Being able to discard maybe two cards that weren't doing anything, or madness cards, or cards that uh, want to be in the graveyard anyway is kind of nice. It's, it's, it's like a role player. It's not a 2.0. I'm getting a 2.5, but uh, yeah, again. It, it, it probably gains plus 5 or minus 5, depending on the deck you have. Stitch Wing Scab, 2.5. Next up, we have Trail of Evidence. One blue, two colorless. Enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, investigate. Hmm. I want this card to be good. In some decks, I think it will probably be okay. But generally... This does nothing. It's three mana for an enchantment that does nothing immediately. And then even when you cast an instant or sorcery, it doesn't do anything immediately. Because you have to still pay two to investigate. Ugh. This card is poop soup, man. Poop soup, I'm going to give it a 1.5. Maybe I try to jam it in some cool deck, but uh, this is this is not, not good. And last of the blue f cards, we have Welcome to the Fold. Two blue, two colorless, sorcery, Madness, 2 blue and X. Gain control of target creature if its toughness is 2 or less. If Welcome to the Fold's Madness cost was paid, instead gain control of that creature if its toughness is X or less. If you're able to use this like a Ray of Command, yeah, this card is real good. Um, obviously you have to have the discard enablers for that to work, but man, I can see this card doing a lot of work. The, the sorcery... Casting this as a sorcery never feels good. There aren't many sacrifice effects in this format, and taking control of a creature with toughness, two or less, is generally going to be pretty bad. But, again, if you can madness this out and turn it into a ray of command, big props. So, depending on the deck, this could be a huge bomb, or it could be Dirtle Turtle Poop Soup. Um, I think in those Dirtle decks where you have very few ways to discard it, it's like a 1.5. But in the decks where you kind of build around the madness, the discard effects, this is easy 3.0, 4.0. I'm oh, sorry, 3.5, 4.0. Oh, wait. Oh, you just gain control of the creature. Oh, reading is tech. Reading is tech. All right. Yes. In that case, in that case, let me take this back. Let me say this. In the decks where you cannot madness it, it is probably still like a 2.5. In the decks where you cannot madness it, this is probably still like a 2.5. In the decks where you do madness this, this is still easy 4.0. Uh, 
Uh, the double blue is the only uh, prohibitive cost. I could I could definitely see this going up to 4.5 levels territory, but I, I'm very very confident, very very happy giving this up 4.0, uh, and it's probably a little bit higher. That concludes this color. Uh, so far we have done white and blue. That took an hour and 10 minutes. What the hell? How does this take so long? <clears throat> Uh, we are going to go do a quick commercial break, and then we will be right back for the block cards. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>